Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, for today's video, I'm going to talk about a subcategory of problems that when you encounter them, you're either going to love them tremendously or you're going to hate them with an other passion. Now, here's the problems. It's statements like this and they ask you a specific question, true or false. Now, I'm not talking about the standardized true or false questions or the ones where you can basically choose true and false and then that's it, right? Those, you have a 50-50 chance, even if you don't know what the heck you're talking about. Now, as you start studying math more and more and you reach a higher level math, true and false is never really just true or false. They're always going to be asking you for more. So that's where it drives us crazy. Now, every time you encounter a problem like this, they're going to ask you true. If it's true, then prove it. If it's false, provide a counterexample. So hopefully you guys can get where I'm coming from now. So if it's true, you have to go through a proof, right? You can go through your proof by induction, proof by contrapositive, proof by contradiction, all your variety of different ways of proving. Now, what we love the most, what we really hope for every time we look at a true or false question, we cross our fingers, pray to the lucky gods, that it's a false statement because when it's a false statement, your life is 10 times, no, a hundred times easier because when it's false, it's just asking for a counterexample. What that means is that you just find one example to show that that statement is not true and then you're good to go. You don't have to go through this long procedure of trying to prove that statement. It's just, if it's false, boom, here is an example where it doesn't work, you are done. So let's look at this. If the sum of two numbers is even, then the individual numbers must both be even. At this point, hopefully you guys realize this is a false statement, right? And then in order to show that, all we have to do is just come up with an example. Well, if it's saying that the sum of two numbers is even, then the individual numbers must be even, then we choose something that is not even. Well, in this case, we just want the end result to be even. Well, why not? One plus one, two, boom, that's it, you're done. This is a false statement, right? Because guess what? One is an odd, one is an odd, add them together and your end result is even. So this statement that because the end result is even, then the individual numbers must both be even, false. That is it. That's why you want it to be false always. Let's look at an example. All right, so before I even continue with other examples that clearly will be false, so you guys can see how easy it is and how wonderful it is when the statement is false, here's the common mistakes when dealing with true and false, right? So we have a statement right here. The sum of two odd is even. Now, well, when it's false, all we have to do is provide one counterexample, one example to show that it doesn't work. So the common mistake is that, well, if this is true, all I have to do is show it's true by providing one example. So the sum of two odd is even. Well, okay, if that's the case, and I say three plus three equals six, there you go. The sum of two odd is even, check, right? No, not really, right? Because guess what? To prove a general statement is true is to say that for any combinations, such that whatever it is, right? In this case, two odd numbers. Any combination of two odd numbers right, add it together is even. You can't just say, well, this is true, yeah, for three and three, but what about three and five? Well, if you test that, that is true, but you gotta keep on testing. So, for statements that are true, you have to prove it, right? You can't provide an example showing that it's true and you're done. So, something like this, you would have to use the definition of, basically, the 2K plus one as a definition of odd, right? And then you have to have another one, uh, 2L uh, plus 1, just so K and L are different, right? And then you add them together, you basically have what? 2K plus 2L plus 2. And then in this case, you can factor out the 2 of everything, which is K plus L plus 1. So since it's multiple of 2, then you know it's even. So you have to go through something like that to show that a statement is true, right? You cannot just provide one example and say you're done. So this is a common mistake, be very careful of that. You only hope that it is false because you can provide that one counterexample. but if it's true, you have to prove it. There's no other way. All right, so here's our example. So for X plus Y 
equals z, where x and y is an element of the rational number, basically can be written as fractions, right? Then z must be in here, right? This is the integer, so positive or negative or zero, right? Whole numbers. So in this case, if we have x plus y is an element of rational, and z must be an element of the integers, then well, guess what? All we have to do, eventually we're gonna build this sort of intuition, right, is counteract that. We wanna show that, well, this is true, this is our condition statement, we're gonna keep that, but we're gonna find it and mess with it in such a way that this is gonna be false. So, if these two are basically rational, let's just pick two rational ones that won't add up to become an integer. Well, let's just pick some easy ones. Let's just say one half plus one third. Okay, well, if we simplify everything and make everything com a common denominator and do all the lovely stuff, we basically have what? Three plus two over six, which gives us five over six. Well, guess what? 5 over 6 is not an element of the integers, and therefore, just from this counterexample we've shown, this statement is false. So let's look at another one. All right, so let's look at another example. If x is prime, then x squared plus 1 is not prime. Now, let's hope it's false. Let's just assume it's false, try to find some example until we exhaust all of our mental capacity in showing that this is false, then it might be true, and then we have to f figure out a way to prove it. So if x is prime, then x squared plus one is not prime. Well, by definition of prime, basically it's a number that can only be broken down into the number itself times one, right? One is not a prime, so remember that. Now, if that's the case, let's just choose the smallest prime and then work from there. Well, if we choose the smallest prime, we know that two is a prime number. Well, two squared, plus one, that is four plus one. Well, guess what? That is five, okay? And we know, hopefully, at this point, five is a prime number. So this statement itself is false because guess what? Even though we picked x as a prime number, we've shown that x squared plus one can also still be prime. All right, so for the previous examples, I've created easy problems so that you guys can almost intuitively, if not from your number sense or from experience, can tell that those statements are false. And so you go about trying to figure out the counterexample, and once you found out the counterexample, you are good to go. Now, when you are in the live battlefield, right, in the test, quiz, so on and so forth, usually the statement is not going to be as obvious. So. When you look at a statement like this, of course, you cross your fingers, you pray to the lucky gods that it is false, because guess what? Then you can find a counterexample. But if you run out of resources, you exhausted your mental capabilities, then you have to go and about and try to prove that it is true. So let's start off with the assumption that it's false, and then worst comes to worst, it's true. So let's look at this. Let A and B be an element of the real number. Then the absolute value of a squared plus the absolute value of b is greater than zero. So, here's the thing, right? When you look at this and you really want it to be false, of course, once again, you always assume this part, right? You give them that part. This is the condition you're providing me, I accept your condition. But, I need to nitpick. I want to find special circumstances to make this latter statement, the final statement, false. So, what can I do? Well, let's look at this. If I want it to be false, there's only two possibilities if this right here, we don't want it to be greater than zero. It's either gonna have to be negative or it's gonna have to be zero. So there you go, there's the thing, right? Let's see if you guys can figure out what to do next. Got it? Cool, all right, so, well, in this case, if we want this part to be either zero or negative, well, then we're gonna be working with numbers that are most likely zero or negative. So, the problem with this is that we're having absolute value and we even have a freaking square right there. So when we work with negative number, the absolute value immediately kicks his butt and say, no, you're positive. So that, that doesn't help us very much. So, what's the other option? Well, it most likely is working with zero. Now, here's the thing. And here's the little trick with certain problems that are very similar to this, right? So A and B are real numbers. 
Nowhere in this statement says that A and B cannot be the same number. So that's our little thing. Well, I'm going to say A and B is the same number. I'm going to go even further and say, all right, well, since A and B is the same number and I can't really mess with negative numbers, I'm going to say that they are zero. Okay, what happens then? In this case, the absolute value of zero squared plus the absolute value of zero, which hopefully at this point, right, even though the absolute value, right, there's zero, zero, so it's basically going to zero plus zero, which is zero. And luckily for us, zero cannot be greater than zero, right? That's a contradiction. And of course, we're going to make a little face right here too, right? This is a contradiction. doesn't work, right? Zero is only equal to zero. So therefore, with this, we can still prove that this statement is false. And just like that, we're good. So hopefully, at least with this final problem, you guys can see, right? You always accept the condition, but you nitpick, right? Try to find itty bitty things that you can sort of unravel to make this final statement false. If it wants positive, I'm going to figure out a way with negative and zero. If it wants even, then I'm going to see something with odd. You know, that kind of mentality, that kind of train of thoughts. So hopefully this makes it a little more clear. All right, so there you have it, right? This is talking about true and false, but not just the basic multiple choice true and false. True and false where true, you have to prove false. You have to provide a counterexample. Every time we see a problem like this, we cross our fingers and of course immediately assume false because guess what? False will always save us a lot more time if all we have to do is find a counterexample. Now, in the odd case that it is true, do not make this common mistake, right? You cannot provide one statement showing that it's true and there it is, you're good to go. If it's true, you have to generalize it, meaning that you actually have to prove the statement is true. Use your variety of proof technique, but prove it nonetheless, right? Hopefully this video clarifies some things. And for those of you guys who are gonna be encountering true and false, the complicated version of true and false, now or in the future, you guys got it. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.